Good evening. I'm Leland Vinnert. We'll start with the breaking news from Washington. We have heard from just about everybody in politics about the raid on President Trump's Mar-a-Lago office. Everyone except the one man who matters most, Attorney General Merrick Garland. It's a good reminder because 24 hours ago, conventional wisdom said that this was so unprecedented. This was such a momentous decision. Garland must explain to the American people the FBI raid. The theory went that raiding a president's house required that. Smart minds told us that Garland would say something to justify his unprecedented decision. And so far, nothing. Thus, what we know is precious little, other than the FBI agents executed a sealed search warrant on Mar-a-Lago yesterday and left with boxes of classified material. We've been able to confirm that. Leaks out of the DOJ indicate that. But 24 hours after this, well, the Washington Post, Mar-a-Lago search appears focused on whether Trump aides withheld items. That's it. That is the farthest the reporting of credible news organizations has gotten. Supporters of the president say it's just the latest attack against him by a deep state. Rivals say it is proof that nobody is above the law. But what law? We still don't know. Most obviously, it would be the Presidential Records Act or laws about the retention of storage of classified material. Yes, the very same laws involved in the Hillary email server scandal. But the only thing, those that want Trump in jail and those that believe he is the great Satan, the only thing they agree on is that the raid must be about something more than those two laws. When I say even those, well, even those who view Trump as a threat to democracy say that. Andrew Cuomo, of all people, weighed in. DOJ must immediately explain the reason for its raid, and it must be more than a search for inconsequential archives, or it will be viewed as a political tactic and undermine any future credible investigation and legitimacy of January 6th investigations. Again, that's Andrew Cuomo, former Democratic governor of New York, one-time possible Democratic presidential candidate. But the only man that matters, quite literally, in Washington right now, and in this case, is Merrick Garland. And so far, he has defined conventional wisdom at every turn. Tom Dupree is here, former Deputy Assistant Attorney General under George W. Bush. Uh, Tom, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say uh, this is the only time uh, in recent memory you've agreed with Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> it's an accurate assessment, Leland. I myself was surprised when I saw the former governor's tweet and I said, you know something? I totally agree. <laughs> Why is Merrick Garland not out there explaining the reasons for doing what is it literally an unprecedented act in American history, executing a warrant on the house of a former president? So the argument would go that he believes in the rule of law. He believes that you don't speak until the, there's an indictment. Um, you think about the situation normally involved between an attorney general and a president. Uh, this goes back a long way. John Mitchell and Nixon, Bobby Kennedy and JFK, this un uncomfortably close relationship. Uh, some argued Ed Meese and Ronald Reagan. And then there was Eric Holder talking about, of course, uh, Barack Obama. I'm still enjoying what I'm doing. There's still work to be done. Um, I gotta, I'm, still, you know, I'm still a president's wingman, so I'm there with my boy. Is Merrick Garland trying to make the point uh, without saying it that he is not? I think he's trying to assert his independence here. I mean, the White House has been denying, you know, up and down that the president had any knowledge or involvement in this decision, that this was purely a law enforcement decision. And I get that. And look, I, I respect the idea that you keep the political branch separate from the Justice Department. But at the same time, this is obviously an extraordinary case, hugely important for our nation's history. And I think that under these circumstances, it's important for the attorney general to explain to the American public that this isn't, as Governor Cuomo so aptly said, just a case about some archived documents. It's got to be something more. Everyone agrees that it's got to be something more, but does it actually have to be something more? Legally, no. Legally, as long as you have the basics for a warrant, meaning there's probable cause, which means you think that there's evidence that will prove a commission of a crime, you can get a judge to sign off on a warrant. But I think the reason why people think it has to be something more is that Merrick Garland 
knows how this works. He knew that there would be an absolute firestorm the moment this search warrant was executed. And so I think everyone looks at this and says, how could Merrick Garland have made such a cataclysmic misjudgment if all he was doing was going in to enforce some archives law that no one cares about? Right, or some classified materials law. Okay, so you think about that. We, we decide that Merrick Garland is either so independent uh, that he has decided that he is going to just sort of follow the letter of the law and the, the political firestorm be damned. The flip side of that is, is that he understands fully the political calculations and he is making a political calculation uh, in and of itself that it is effectively worth it to go, to go do this. Um, you say this isn't his first rodeo. He's, he's got to be aware of this. So we'll take the second uh, iteration of this. What would have to happen that it would that reasonable people would all agree yes it was worth it i think there would have to be some showing that this was more than a violation of a record keeping law in other words if they showed i mean again we're totally speculating right but right. if that president was gonna you know sell off classified documents to another nation or something like that, I mean, then people might say, okay, it made sense to execute a warrant. But if all this is is a record keeping violation, I think most people are gonna say that's a foot fault and you don't bust into the home of the former president to enforce a record keeping violation. Uh, okay, so if we go on that route, is there also a possibility that this is a head fake, uh, that he's doing this so it gives him cover to do anything he wants say in the Hunter Biden investigation? Well, you know, I don't know. I don't know if Garland thinks along those lines. I mean, may maybe, but I think he he must have something, uh, you know, showing that there was some sort of imminent danger to documents or that national security was at stake or something. I mean, I, I don't think Garland is trying to play some sort of weird political chess game here, Leland, because look, honestly, it's backfiring if that's his motive. I mean, we've seen what happens. The Republicans are now united saying this. Even a lot of Democrats, Cuomo, are questioning what the administration you, you, is doing. You, you've worked inside the, the Justice Department in, in very difficult times. I'm thinking about during uh, the war on terror. It's very sensitive political discussions. Uh, if we are to believe uh, that the president is not part of these discussions, you, one could argue whether or not Ron Klain, with the chief of staff, was given a heads up or not. Who does Merrick Garland have to talk to about these things? His deputies. That's it. I mean, he could talk to the deputy attorney general. He could talk to the head of the FBI, Chris Ray. But if you're going to seal off the attorney general from the White House, that basically leaves the attorney general to consult with senior law enforcement officials. Uh, and you don't really have that you know, political input that would you would get if you loop in the White House. So, so how does this play going forward? How does he decide whether or not he indicts a former president in even a more unprecedented way that we would then finally get the explanation for. Well, I mean, in a minute, he's going to consult with folks at the Justice Department. But it seems to me if you are going to cross that Rubicon, if you are going to actually indict a former president of the United States, I don't see how you could not at least give the president a heads up, because that is such a momentous historic judgment. I think it would be just earth shaking for this nation. And to make that decision unilaterally without looping in the White House and the president, to me, seems like it would be a mistake. We, we've all been saying, I say we all, this conventional wisdom ac across the board, party lines, that he must come out and speak. Why isn't he? That's a great question. I mean, th these are crickets that we, we're hearing today. I mean, I kept thinking, surely, surely at some point, the attorney general is going to at least say something just to assuage the concerns, many of which are coming from liberal quarters, not just yeah. conservative quarters, but liberal quarters. He has it. I look, I, I think there's, there's this strong institutional sense in the Justice Department that you don't comment on pending investigations. And I get it. That rule makes sense, at least in 99% of the cases. Yeah. I'm not sure it makes sense in this unique circumstance. Well, last last question for you just from a process standpoint they don't have to keep this search warrant application sealed they don't have to do that at the same time president trump if he thought this the whole thing was bogus he could release the search warrant that was served upon him and say look they're coming after me for archival crimes for for things that even democrats say is ridiculous what's going on yeah. here 
Th th that's a great point. Look, if President Trump wanted to release that search warrant, he has it in his possession. That could be public within the hour. And I'll tell you what else would be public. When the Justice Department seizes your records, they basically have to give you a receipt identifying the things that they took from your house. President Trump has that too. So he could release both the warrant, he could release the list of items that were taken, which I think would go a long way maybe towards starting to dispel some of the mystery that currently swirls around what happened yesterday. Yeah, well, it, the, there, there is a lot of mystery. Uh, he who knows in Washington is not talking tonight. Uh, Tom, it's good to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Leland. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.